It's Patti Smith with Gloria from her debut release, Horses, here on the Afternoon Show, 90.3 FM, KEXP in Seattle. I'm Kevin Cole, and joining me this afternoon, an artist who's a band in the 80s, uh, really set the sonic template for what uh, would become alternative rock, profoundly influencing the likes of Nirvana and the Pixies. Uh, an artist whose band really put the hooks and melody and the raw aggression of punk and uh, who really expanded the emotional depth of that genre at that time. An artist who also really helped establish kind of the guidelines for what it meant to be an independent American underground rock band. Like there weren't like the established clubs there are now and sort of the, the rules of the road. An artist that in uh, recent years has done some spoken word with Patti Smith and uh, who at one point appeared on the Joan Rivers show. <laughs> That's pretty pretty strange. Not many imagine people can see. them together. Well, it's, it's hard to imagine. I just found out that Patti Smith is actually going to be on an episode of Law and Order this weekend, acting. Might as well. Exactly. I mean, why not? She's in the, uh, the latest Godard, isn't she? I have no idea. Yeah, she is. Really? Yeah. Cool. Uh, when have you uh, seen her last? <laughs> well, she's playing a professor of mythology in uh, in the Law and Order episode, which doesn't that seems like a good role for her. Yeah. Well, Lenny attached himself to a good star. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're not here to uh, talk a ton about the past. We're going to talk about uh, what you're doing now. But uh, well, Patty doesn't blank much with the past, but she blanks plenty with the future. So. We'll she keep sure it does. going in that direction. Cool. So, uh, Grant Hart, welcome. It's great to see you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it's you stopping by. Nice getting together with uh, old friends, for those of you who don't know uh, this little factoid. But uh, Kevin and I go back, uh, wow, a long time. I think uh, when More you... than half of our ages. That's true. And, uh, well, dang, I was going to put a date to it now. I don't know if I want to do that. But... Not that I, now that I said that, yeah. <laughs> Certainly, uh, you know, I remember mixing your sound a couple times in the early Husker Du days mm -hmm. in the 7th Street entry before uh, Terry Katzman kind of yeah. took over the sonic responsibilities there when I worked at First Ave, 7th Street entry, and uh, have always been uh, just a longtime admirer of your work and your art and your thinking and uh, all of that. Well, you've uh, you've championed so many developing styles and forms of music. I mean, you know, I remember, you know, when you were doing the uh, House Nation Under the Groove in uh, 7th Street Entry. Yeah, so, you know, and so for listeners who might not know, the 7th Street Entry was typically uh, kind of the uh, punk rock room or the underground, not uh, well, non-commercial bands, and uh, still is and always has been, but there was a period where I kind of transformed that room into... Just this incredibly Abitorium. sonic. <laughs> yeah, it it was uh, all the senses were kind of shut down. There was pitch, just just sound, and uh, played really hardcore house music. This was eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine, yep. and that style was just developing. And I love the fact that you uh, would show up at those nights. It meant a lot to me. Well, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, I'd, I'd I'd stolen from the other genres already, so it was time to. Uh, Pick those berries. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, you've done a, a ton of work, and uh, you've got a... Well, we'll talk a little bit about this in a sec, but there is an album that came out about a year and a half ago, Hot Wax, and you've got a song you're going to play from that? Sure. Um, yeah, so that's what the CZ on my hands in ink stands for. It's for California Zephyr, and that goes... That's a little song, and it goes like this. <laughs> Emeryville is as far as it goes Take a bus to the Embarcadero And a cab to the Bay Bridge Inn They check you out while they check you in Quick shower and a bite to eat Then he's ready to hit the street Out of sight and out of mind He left his hometown far behind He rides the California Effort. He rides the ghost starlight. He and his friends will get together tonight. Tonight. Came here years ago. Took the Empire Builder from Chicago. Met some people on the way. He liked the city and decided to stay. 
Certain interests and pursuits He learned the city and he knew the roots Fell in love and he settled down Made San Francisco his hometown He rides the California Zephyr He rides the coast starlight Left the city and here is why He got tired of watching all his friends die Funerals and farewell toasts He felt like he was surrounded by ghosts Sad looks from those who remain He came to party not to feel pain Those who gather for last call The Eagle Tavern welcomes them all He and his friends will get together tonight Tonight, tonight, tonight He rides the California Zephyr He rides the coast starlight Grant Hart, California Zephyr, that is on the new album, Hot Wax and Grant Hart playing tonight at the Fun House on uh, Saturday night uh, in Portland at the East End. You mentioned you were just up in Vancouver, and actually your guitar got uh, partially damaged yeah, in the uh, riots. I was, uh, I was not anticipating that there was going to be so many hockey fans at my show, <laughs> but... Um, um, a couple untoward comments and uh, seriously, you know, yeah, me and my big mouth, and, and they, uh, they turned on you. You, well, you insulted the team or the sport, um, or oh, I insulted their whole country, their whole <laughs> their whole system, you know. Um, but it probably wasn't that that triggered it. Uh, I I think it's probably hockey. It was probably hockey, yeah. And uh, I mean, they knew there was going to be a riot, win or lose. The um, 94, when they had had their last, you know... Stanley Cup final. Stanley thing. Cup final. They had a riot, and, uh, you know, the there was so much preparation for it that, you know, they would have lost money in the city if they hadn't followed through and had the riot, you know? Wow. So they, they had planned for uh, some of the destruction... But not for your guitar being hit. Uh, no, but uh, it did give me a chance to, uh, you know, spend more time on stage, you know, like critically examining the, you know, intonation. And, you know, when you, when you have to repair something, you know, you're, you're, you're maintaining it. Mm -hmm. So, You've always been really fearless. I don't know stage. what it is against me, but I'm like uh, stupid that way. Well... I think it's just being honest and being in the moment, yeah. you know, and just letting things happen as they happen, not trying to write a script ahead of time. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it hasn't lost me too many friends, any, any real <laughs> friends. Well, your real friends will stick with you. So um, I know you're working on a, a new project uh that uh, is really kind of based around uh, Paradise Lost. And yeah. you've got a song from that. Uh, okay, let's see. What does my hand stay, say here? Uh, SF. What is SF? Okay, that must stand for this one. I Okay, now in the uh, context, context of Paradise Lost, there's the... Uh, um, Lucifer has escaped from hell. He's talked his way out of hell promising far more return in souls to sin and her son, Death, who eats souls. And uh, he says, if you let me out, I'll let many more in. And uh, 
He stops at the sun where the archangel Uriel is stationed watching over the earth, which hangs from the sun by a golden chain. Now, in the big picture as far as what Milton was writing about when he was writing about it, this was a time when Galileo was living under fear of death from the, you know, the life sentence imposed on him by the Pope. If you talk about the heliocentric universe, we're going to stone you. And Milton actually was a friend of Galileo's. And to me, the idea of the earth hanging from the sun by a golden chain suggests the Copernican universe with the earth revolving around the sun. I mean, why not nail it to the sun if you're going to attach the two of them? But the chain implies movement in a uh, radius. So I think he was uh, addressing that. Throughout the, uh, throughout the story, he's addressing knowledge, forbidden knowledge, what is forbidden if it's worth knowing. And that's the, the main argument that uh, Lucifer slash Satan is proposing in the, uh, in the work that, you know, you know what, what possible knowledge could be forbiddable? You know, I mean, what is there to know that is profane? You know, and, um, this is the song sung by the archangel, uh, archangel Uriel when Satan comes asking for directions but, uh, to the Garden of Eden. I sit and watch the world alone from this star. I see you approaching, I wonder who you are. What's a little angel doing so far from heaven? He's disguised as a cherub. What is it you're seeking? What would be your prize? Is it no fair peeking if I look past your disguise? Would I see an angel that I recognize from heaven? You travel far, you travel long, listening for that brand new song. were defeated and you fell are you one of those angels who went all the way to hell from heaven And 
the Sweet. reason he gives to the archangel that he's looking for Earth in the first place is because he's heard of these wonderful new creatures that he wants to mimic their sounds in the celestial chorus praising, you know, the, the High Holy One. But uh, it's, a, uh, it's a nice chance to uh, play a little with the heretical. Well, I was going to ask you about that, but uh, first, uh, man, that song, beautiful song. And whenever I hear a song, I don't know, about angels, I think doo-wop, right? Oh, that yeah. That song could have a really nice... Johnny Ace. Yeah, doo-wop vibe to it. Yeah. Uh, the chord progression sounded like uh, it would sound nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, what is, I mean, obviously, there's a wealth of material in uh, Paradise Lost that you can uh, yeah. tap into. It's an epic poem. Yeah. It really addresses kind of the universal questions of why are we here? Yeah. Right, wrong. Um, pert near every line, ten syllables long, unrhymed, as Milton said, uh, undecorated with rhyme. But uh, being a pop smith, I, you know, I write things that rhyme. It uh, is how people remember songs. You know, it's uh, it's what I do. So, um, this is a project I've heard about for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Where you at with it? I was and composing it before I finished uh, the Hot, Hot Wax. Wax record. So, uh, Hot Wax came out in two thousand nine. the uh, The album prior to that was a decade before. Yeah. So, um, you were kind of maintaining a low profile. Um, I was traveling was a lot. I'm, I mean, I was six years past that record when I when I realized, gee, I'm still touring this thing. Yeah. And prudently, I hadn't introduced a lot of the the songs from Good News for Modern Man into the live set. So when it you know, it every, had a lot every of life. couple years or so, I could add a couple to the live presentation. But I was uh, I was really unhappy going from label to label to label, one release at a time. So I spent some time, you know, collecting the rights to everything and working with a distributor, MVD, out of uh, uh, the Philadelphia area. I, you know, they're pressing and distributing label for me condor records is this the rights to all the nova mob and uh your current we've, uh, records? we've re released um last days of pompeii the the remix of that which was done for the pachyderm label but the studio and label owner's wife ran off with the main investor so that didn't bode well for the continuation of that man's hobby it's a crazy world. It's like paradise lost. Yeah, it's like <laughs> everybody's losing their losing their something. But uh yeah, it was really paradise lost for this guy. He had picked up this beautiful piece of property right on a right on the Cannon River in Minnesota and limestone cliffs on each side of the ravine. He built world class studio that uh um there was some band from around here that recorded at it. Uh, yeah, their album In Utero was Dave, recorded there. Dave Gould. <laughs> yeah. Um, you recently... I call him Dave Gould because he lives off of the dead. But, um, yeah, uh, he had this Paradise Studio, and he just lost it. Yeah, I heard recently, uh, I saw that it was up for sale, the property itself, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't. Well, the beautiful mixing con console, the 48-channel Neve fully, automatic, fu fully automated board is in some rich kid's living room, you know, doing, um, what do you call it, Pro Tools. <laughs> I don't say that word very often. I'm an old analog dog. Yeah. Yeah. It's Grant Hart live on the afternoon show, playing tonight at the Fun House. How about an, uh, another song from Hot Wax? Okay, what did I uh, what did I write down there? Um, this one I was going to ask. It sounds like kind of a uh, oh, a, a Buddhist saying or a Buddhist. Re well, um, when Patty was doing her uh, covers album, I was one verse short of completing this song, and I this song was 
right up her alley for me. But uh, it was inspired when they were deciding on the next Panchen Lama, who is the counterpart to the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama's number one job is to make sure the ascendancy of the Panchen Lama is in accordance with tradition. The Panchen Lama, Panchen Lama's main job is to make sure the Dalai Lama is succeeded according to the tradition. And the Communist Chinese have been interfering with things Tibetan for 50 years now. And they decided they were going to introduce the selection process known as the Golden Urn, which is basically putting the names in a hat and coming out with, <laughs> surprise, the Chinese candidate. But uh, one of the elder lamas made the comment about their con candidate. He said, uh, oh, yes, he's a, an exquisite candidate. He's, he's the reflection of the moon on the water, but he isn't the moon. And that's where I stole that. You're the reflection of the moon on the water. You're the reflection of the moon on the water. You're the reflection of the moon on the water. But you're not the moon. You are the scent of the sea on the night wind. You are the scent of the sea on the night wind. You are the scent of the sea on the night wind. You're not the sea. You are the shadows from the light of a fire. You are the shadows from the light of a fire. You are the shadows from the light of a fire. But you're not the light. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You're not the rain. the moon on the water you're the reflection of the moon on the water you're the reflection of the moon on the water but you're not the moon you are the scent of the sea on the night wind you are the scent of the sea on the night wind you are the scent of the sea on the night wind but you're not the sea you are the shadows from the light of a fire you are the shadows from the light of a fire. You are the shadows from the light of a fire. You're not the light. of the moon on the water you the reflection of the moon on the water you the reflection of the moon on the water but you're not the moon you are the scent of the sea on the night wind you are the scent of the sea on the night wind you are the scent of the sea on the night wind you're not the sea you are the shadows from the light of a fire you are the shadows from the light of a fire. You are the shadows from the light of a fire. You're not the light. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You are the sound of the rain on the dry earth. You're not the rain. Not the rain. Grant Hart, live in studio here, KEXP. You're the reflection of the moon on the water. You're not the moon. Grant playing tonight at the Fun House, tomorrow night in Portland at East End. And uh, that song was from uh, the new album, Hot Wax. You recorded that in uh, Minneapolis and Montreal with yeah. uh, Godspeed, You Black Emperor. Those folks were uh, the yeah. band, right? 
Are you familiar with the record they did with uh, Vic Chestnut? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, I think that was the more like the record they intended to make. But they invited me up to the, the studio to make an album with them. And I'm thinking, oh, string players, yeah, like, yeah. oh, beautiful studio, blah, 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 blah. And uh, the clock was ticking. And the studio became very, very popular. They decided to change locations. Time got scarcer and scarcer and scarcer, so I decided to uh, record it with a... Uh, artist engineer Mike Wistie from the Rank Strangers. Oh, yeah. Um, this guy, for the past 15 years, any band that has caught my ear, I'll be talking to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're doing some demos with Mike Wistie, or we're making an album with Mike Wistie. So there's a real, real parallel to the way we think and the way we hear. And he likes to experiment around. I like to, you know, get things unique. Yeah, you've always done that in a pop context. That song, for example, on the album has some really great textures to it. Thank you. Yeah. So are you going to work with him on Paradise Lost? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, we're uh, um, there's about four songs left to be recorded. And that, that one is mostly in the can. And I, um, part of the working plan was we weren't going to attempt any remixes until the last rough mix you know we, we've gone for final mixes every time we've mixed them now we realize that uh, you know some of these could be tuned up a little bit and all the time when two people are working their uh, their skills actually sharpen and you know in the case of a long-term project you know you can reapproach something and do it better by revisiting it yeah um not like stripping it back all the way but like especially mixing is something that yeah if you work on like five six seven songs over the course of two years you can hear like when you get to that last one hey the first one was good but now what we've learned and what we how we're working yeah. together could be better does that ever end up being sort of a paralyzing concept well not well that, that like, like might when be can you let something go why i particularly am fond of working 24 track analog because there's always a little pinpoint of light at the end of the tunnel that you're going through. Now so many people when they are working uh, especially with Pro Tools the the concept isn't about finishing the record it's about working on the record and recording another track is you know most often what somebody will do instead of figuring out how they're going to mix the tracks that they do have. And the nice thing about having a limitation is you know when to put down the crayon. Yeah, yeah. And... You don't know. have an infinite number of uh, yeah. possibilities. Because, I mean, what song doesn't need a 12-string on the intro and, you know, a triangle on the, you know, second to the last bar and... You, know. you mean like the triangle, ding, ding, yeah. triangle. <laughs> yeah, a love sex triangle. <laughs> Excellent. It's Grant Hart live on the afternoon show again. Uh, in town playing at the Fun House tonight. How about one last song? Okay. Do you know what that one would be? Um, it could be uh, Barbara, or it could oh, be it could Flexible be Flyer, or it could be books about UFOs, or it could be uh, well, I got Little these, Misinformation. These, these rough little jottings on my finger, and this letter <laughs> B must stand for Barbara. Um, this song was written, um, Esopus magazine, kind of a coffee table magazine, a lot of glossy pages with no print on them. Uh, fun to look at. Yeah, fun to look at um, for five minutes. But they, uh, they requested synopsises from their readers of their childhood imaginary friends. And then they sent these synopses out to different songwriters to choose one and write a song about some unknown person's imaginary childhood friend. And wow. I made the good selection of uh, having been inspired by Barbara, which was the childhood friend of the editor's mother. So uh, that was great points there. But uh, 
goes a little something like this. Barbara always better turn it up. Barbara always avoids unpleasant situations. She rides right next to me between the streetcar stations. Her knees are big and they're bony. She takes up all the cushions. Barbara always avoids unpleasant situations. And I'm, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, she acts naughty. Right, right on the walls in the hallways and the kitchen. Well, I get punished for her crayon illustrations. Barbara always avoids unpleasant situations, and I'm I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one you can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one you can see. Barbara, always avoids unpleasant situations. She rides right next to me between the streetcar stations. Her knees are big and they're bony, she takes up all the cushions. Barbara always avoids unpleasant situations. And I'm, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, yes, I'm the only one who can see. Barbara, Barbara. Sweet. Thank you. It's Barbara. That is a song about an imaginary friend, and uh, you can find it on Hot Wax, Grant Hart's latest. And uh, Sometimes the best kind of friend to have. Well, yeah, I wonder how common that is. Did you have a childhood imaginary friend or friends? No, but I, uh, I pretended I was an animal at different times. When you were a kid? I, I, I enjoyed uh, becoming Curious George. Mm-hmm. And uh, climbing up on the counter and swinging around, swallowing pieces of a puzzle and <laughs> flummoxing the man with the big yellow hat. And so you, uh, in this set, to, for example, two of the songs at least were songs uh, where you are in the mindset of a character. Maybe that's uh, why the Paradise Lost thing was inevitably attractive to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that actually started out is uh, a friend of mine, a secretary for a writer, who had a piece adapted for a musical. And the producer of the musical was looking for another property that this guy had done a treatment of to, to exploit. And I read the, the treatment and I thought, God, this, this is terrible. I could do better than this. And thinking that I was going to be hired on as the composer, um, the whole thing kind of kind of fizzled out, and I was left with a handful of songs that I'd prepared already, and I decided, well, just and a follow good idea. through with it. You know, there's a, there's a lot in those pages. Oh, yeah. So um, when can we look for a, a new record then? You said you got well, four or five songs I, left. Uh, um, the, the thing about answering a question like that is somebody somewhere is going to 
book a show to coincide with a hypothetical date that I just pull out of my, you know, mind at this juncture, and somebody will make a tour out of that, and the next thing you know, I'm hurrying to finish up the last 5% of the record, but uh, I'm hoping to to finish it for a uh, for an autumn release, but I'm not, you know, the, the quality of the record comes first, and, you know, whatever whatever should happen, you know, is... Well, we'll look forward to that. I know you've been... Uh... It's not going to be called Paradise Lost, though. I've encountered so many, like, real stupid things that are hooked up to that that phrase, whether it's, like, wrestling or heavy metal or... Um, so I'm calling it the argument. The argument. Yeah. It's good. Thank you. Uh, Grant Hart again live here on KEXP, playing at the Fun House tonight. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by. And then we're funning at the Playhouse. That's right. And uh, it's good to see you. It's great to hear you. Yeah. And uh, look forward to uh, to more music soon. Come down, come down tonight and you can meet Kevin Cole. <laughs> it's the afternoon show here on KEXP.